Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fine episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I can pretty much guarantee this is going to be a better than fine conversation because I've already had a chance to get to know Iris Culp a little bit uh, here. And she's just, I mean, I, just, I don't want to throw this word around, around lightly. She's just a, a delight. Like, I feel delighted from having gotten to talk with her. We were working on some technical difficulties with the microphones. It all worked out perfectly. She demonstrated some pretty solid expertise on the audio video side of things. I was like, oh, I'm very impressive. So I can't wait to get to know Iris better and to introduce you to Iris. So let me let me read a little tiny bit about her, and then I will let her speak for herself here shortly. Iris helps six-figure service-based solopreneurs get clear on their brand distinctives message and positioning once those are and i love this turn of phrase once those are crisp and compelling I, I, not only the alliteration but i love crisp and compelling your marketing efforts will feel like putting a warm knife through butter warm knife through butter again the way the way you express yourself the way you communicate your business is just uh, i respond to it so so delightedly well, her superpower you. is cutting through the clutter on linkedin and getting clear on your message I, as you can tell i'm almost like bubbling over with enthusiasm Iris, it's great to meet you. Thank you for being on the pod today. I'm just, uh, once again, I'm going to say it one more time. I am delighted to have you. I am so delighted to be here. <laughs> you, you were a lot of fun. And the intro was, uh, was I'm like, oh yeah, I wrote that. And uh, my background <laughs> actually started in uh, a lot in writing. So yeah. Well, we're going to go back to your background. Well, I always like to kind of cheekily call this your superhero origin story because I just I love to know how coaches get their powers. But there's also the temptation because sometimes going back to the beginning can be a, a key professional pivot or a mentor with the right words at the right moment that kind of unlocked or revealed like what coaching could be for you and how it could serve you and how you could serve the world. Sometimes mm -hmm. it goes back to childhood where I was just like, I was always a coach. I just didn't have the words for it. And so what yeah. was your what was your origin story? How did you get started on this journey? Well, I really consider what I do across uh, 30 plus years around communication. And it was probably, it, it was a couple of years ago. And so I was trying to explain kind of 20 years in HR and like a decade of marketing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it's really about communication. It really is about unlocking the mystery of communicating with other humans. Mm -hmm. And my origin story, actually, when I went back to it, it really started as a child. And just in full transparency, I grew up in a home, I'm going to call it a <laughs> severe Scandinavian. <laughs> and what I mean by that is if you have the, if you have the, the vision of Scandinavians being very kind of reserved, few words, blah, 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 you're totally right on. <laughs> so I grew up in this home where words were kind of parsed. And communication was a bit mysterious. And in my professional life, it brought in my 20s, I ran into a personality science that helped unlock some of that mystery. And I really spent about the first 25 years of my professional life around that. Um, and then I had a minor in journalism in college. Actually, my first job out of college was working professionally as a writer, which mm. was an amazing privilege. And um Anyway, through a series of events, personal uh, transracial adoption, special needs situation, um, I took a break professionally and then started back in professionally through my writing, which ended up, I'm a systems person, so I tend to think begin with the end in mind, and if we're trying to get closer to our audience, um, my tech background came in, and I actually helped scale a company, what was it, 1.1 to 2.3 in less than 24 months, no ad spend. And at that point, it was Yahoo Groups and Facebook. So, wow. <laughs> I, but it is, it's unlocking that mystery of how people understand your message. Mm. And that's really so critical um, in, in really all aspects of life. And when you understand people are wired differently and you need to speak the languages, I mean, there's there's kind of four languages, if you will, from a personality standpoint, and then how to bring that in just from a sensory standpoint as well in the language and the writing and where you show up and all that kind of thing. So I really consider myself a communications coach and I just pull on those. Now, my subspecialty and my main business focus is marketing and a LinkedIn coach. 
or you can call a consultant because I'm very opinionated on certain things. But anyway, <laughs> helping people yeah. communicate with their message on LinkedIn and draw those people to them and repel the people that aren't them. So mm. um, in my six week program called uh, Six Weeks from Questions to Confidence and Business on LinkedIn, we do uh, we do several C's, clarity, which is that brand, connection, being connected to your ideal client, content, conversation, conversion. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's all communication. And the origin yeah. story is my family would communicate and somehow a decision got made, but I really never knew what the decision was, mm -hmm. but the decision got made. And I'm mm -hmm. like, there's got to be a better way. <laughs> so that was a really time. long version of <laughs> of inspiration and um but that's really what it came down to no i love that there's a, a couple of a couple of interesting uh um dualities or dichotomies that you that you that you mentioned that i really love and one is a lot of people <clears throat> will think of communication as trying to figure out what they're saying mm. where you really need to figure out how people are hearing it how it's yeah. landing what's landing on them and you often think about your words and how you're formulating yourself you think of i have to express my message and it's 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 way more about how it's hitting the people you're trying exactly. to hit and less how it's coming out of your mouth right i there's a phrase and and i'll try to get it pretty close to right it's something like the um the biggest fallacy about communication is that you spoke and it happened <laughs> 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 okay, I like that. I like that. And that's that's what I mean. That's the point you're bringing out because mm -hmm. that that really is. And we're complex human beings, and that's that's a little bit of the I'll say the mystery of marketing. It's really not mysterious. I tend to be very data driven around, um, you know, systems and getting a message out to people and where to spend time. And uh, a question I often get asked is like, Oh, I have to be on social media and. Blah, blah, blah. And I, now I need to go on this platform and this platform. And I'm like, oh, hell spells. No, you don't. Pick one. <laughs> I'll say conquer it, get good, get comfortable, whatever. Uh, make sure it's where your people are. And then, yeah, maybe expand. So uh, we have in today's noisy world from a communication standpoint, I think clarity is a gift. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the pivot points in my life, the clarity was such a gift. And um, it's a gift when you do your own, I'm going to say brand, brand positioning mm -hmm. um, and message. And I've, I've had some clients uh, take a group class and they literally have had like someone reach out to them and hire them just because they hadn't even posted. That's, I'm thinking of two clients in particular went mm -hmm. through the six week program and, and like one of them, this person gave me an update the other day and she said, yeah, that $1,200 client, now they've been with me for two years. Hmm. And it was someone who she somewhat tangentially knew. This person got really clear on her message and um, it's been worth whatever that is, 1,200 times two years. So a good chunk of change. And same thing with uh, actually three clients that I'm thinking of now. Anyway, hmm. no, so- absolutely. So clarity is a gift and so important. Yeah. In my head, like as you were describing that experience, I had the uh, that sort of, well, I'm kind of feeling nostalgic again, since you mentioned Yahoo groups, I was thinking about just tuning a radio and I'm, I'm sitting in the car and I'm looking, I'm, I'm turning the dial and the little bars move and you're kind of, you're trying to find just the right frequency. And when you find it, there's some static. And as you get closer, sometimes it gets a little bit louder and staticier. Yes. But when you lock into that frequency, and the music comes through crystal clear and all of a sudden everything makes sense. It's like, that's what it feels like to me to get yeah, your messaging I, you know what? clear. Oh my, Kevin, I want to come across and hug you um, <laughs> because that's the exact analogy I often share in like a workshop. You know, once you literally dial in your message, boom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there's no, it, it, it's, it's that same feeling. It really, it feels just like that all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but all of a sudden you feel like dancing. Because the, yeah, the, the, music, the exactly. music is clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, perfect analogy. And sometimes people will say, well, Iris, we, we look at this chart and it's like 4% of your audience, your ideal audience has probably got the money to buy, ready to buy and has the need, has the need to the point where the pain is such that they're willing to pay. So that's roughly 4%, three to four, depending on things. And then there's 30, 30, 30. Anyway, 
people say, well, Iris, how do I find that 4%? And then I say, you don't. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, but you're marketing. Like, you just didn't tell me how I find them. And I'm like, well, yeah, you do need to know where they're hanging out. But once your message is clear, they tend to step out of the shadows. Um, mm -hmm. So it sounds too simplistic. Um, and there are some moving parts to that. Of course, there's some strategy and some tactics. But but that's the essence of, of what my focus and um, kind of what I would call my superpower. I love to help people tell their story and mm -hmm. connect to their to their people. You made another another important point too uh, early, like you know, ten minutes ago in our conversation that is still sticking with me because it's something I think about a lot, and how you you made sure to make a, a distinction between who you attract and who you repel, and yes. how that's a, a crucial part to consider both. And it makes me think of of that term that gets thrown around a lot: qualifying leads, qualifying mm -hmm. conversations, and how that word is basically just a shorthand for we want to attract the people we want to attract that we can serve the most who we're ideally suited to fit with. And we also want to make sure that we're repelling people who aren't good fits for us so that we don't waste their time. They don't waste ours. We don't incidentally spend resources that we could better apply elsewhere on people who perhaps were never going to be a good fit. We want to make sure that those people get the clarity that I'm not for them at the right. same time. We want the right people to get the clarity that we are for them. Right. That that's so well said. Yeah. And that's probably one of the most common situations that I run into for someone in an early stage, because I've helped a number of people launch their business, so to speak, sometimes like engineering consultants or someone who's really, really good. And they're like, oh, I'm launching. I, I've got to, I've got to serve everybody. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I challenge, I, I kindly, firmly, but very distinctly say no, because mm -hmm. You know, if you had unlimited time, yes, but you don't. You're one human being and, and you know, time is the great equalizer, right? Jeff Bezos and I have the same 24 hours. So it's how we leverage that time. And mm -hmm. if you're everything to everybody, you really aren't doing um, a good job. And I'm definitely a, you know, let's let's make the pie big just because I'm not a fit. Sometimes it's just persona and style and whatever and um uh, then i'll refer to someone else and mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm happy that's, to do that that's the way the business goes to every every really good successful coach worth their salt that i've spoken to has that at the core of their being it's like the fit yes. needs to be right and if it's not going to be me i'm going to put you i'm going to put you in touch with somebody who i think might be or a couple of somebody's right right i did that about a month ago and this person was a close friend of mine she's like i need marketing help i said yes you do but really this other coach is going to be better because i know i work with systems but this person really works with i'm going to say just set up just uh, i'm going to say internal workings of the business and i said mm. you need her first because if I bring you a lot of customers, you won't be able to keep, you know, you're, you're not mm. quite ready. I was, I was a bit more tactful. That sounded a little tacky right now, but anyway. No, but that's, yeah. that, that's the heart of it though. It's like, you know, it's yeah. like, you're not prepared to receive what, what my work would bring you. And so let's, let's get the foundation over right. here. Late, it was a very foundational first. right to her business. So yeah. And then I ran yes. into her and, um, and this coach and they're like, oh yeah. So yeah, mm. yeah. It comes around. <laughs> it does. So. It always does. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that trust though. You have to like get to learn to, to, what's the phrase? I mean, I toss this out there a lot to trust the process. I think it comes from like a basketball team or whatever, but it really is. It's a lot about that trust. And a, a lot of what a great coach can offer is that trust and some mm -hmm. understanding of what the process is like. It's like, it's going to be really simple. Might be a little hard, might hurt a little bit, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go through it together. I'm going to guide you through. Right. <laughs> And I tend to help people get clear on not only their message, but who they are. And um, that phrase that I'm sure a lot of that you probably heard and a lot of your listeners have probably heard is, you know, you can't, I, I, I say it like you can't read the label on the jelly jar when you're in it and you're the jelly. That's mm -hmm. kind of my homespun way or whatever, you know, grow <laughs> up a farm and whatever. It's, it's just like I did a lot of jelly and you can't read it. So you have to have someone, and I take them through an exercise, like go out and collect this information from colleagues, friends, and clients. And one, it's 
it feels really good. Oh, we do this in the profiles that produce in another program, a group program that I offer. And people just come back and they're like, I had no idea people thought that. And I'm like, okay, now those are the core things. Let's, let's, let's blend that into your, your cookie dough or whatever of say your about section. And I'm a big believer of like, someone says, oh, it's so hard to write the about section. Well, it is because when in our lives do we stop to stop and write about ourselves? And not very often. And you want an outside perspective. And that that space has changed so much. Um, you know, it used to be an online resume. It's 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 not that. My favorite phrase when that is like, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. You know, I mean <laughs> that platform that, that- is that platform has changed so much. It's different than what the founders originated. And now it has like 15 times more content impressions than uh, job postings. Mm-hmm. So it's massive. And um, I remember a CEO or president person was like, oh, I don't need to be on LinkedIn. I'm the president. And then this wasn't a conversation with me, but a colleague. And this person said, well, let's let's Google you. Like, if you've ever heard the word defensive Googling, this, this is it. You, you want to go find what online says about you. So, yeah, because LinkedIn mm-hmm. has the highest Moz score. It's like 100 in the mm-hmm. SEO world, which I only know a snippet about that, but enough to talk, enough to mention it. So LinkedIn is usually the first thing that's going to come up. Well, mm-hmm. he didn't have a LinkedIn. So this is funny. Mm-hmm. This is funny. Details of his court messy divorce case was what came up in place number one. Ooh. So the CEO, yeah, yeah, exactly. You think you Ooh. don't have an online reputation? Hell spells, you do. Are you paying attention to it? Um, that's that's the question. I'll just leave out there. <laughs> something something will fill that gap if it's not you. And yes. you are you hit the nail right on the head. LinkedIn is is so much more evolved of a platform than it was even a year ago like I, yes. as, as you might imagine in this this podcast has been going for a couple of years now yeah and just even over the last couple of years and talking to coaches everyone's just like more and more it's just like linkedin has just evolved and it's so much more powerful and for connection and content whew. it is it is and i mean like a lot of things, I mean, COVID upended a lot of things and LinkedIn went from whatever the standard usage, it went up usage wise in those, in those first 60 days after the pandemic started, it, it jumped 600% in terms of usage. It is still, and, and of course that was an anomaly, right? People were probably on there looking for jobs, but what's (laughs) fascinating, at least to me, (laughs) is that (laughs) engagement has stayed at 50% 50% higher than it was pre-pandemic. So that just says there's a staying power there. And, and I actually was a certified career coach before I decided to LinkedIn for business. And I thought there's a lot of people on this platform who are really sucking wind. Like their traditional ways of client acquisition are are stunted or cut off entirely. And they're doing some weird stuff. <laughs> and I already had already been certified as a LinkedIn coach. And I just moved over into helping, you know, solopreneurs and small businesses. I'm like, oh, some, you know, this is a little embarrassing. Um, so let's get out there and serve some people. Yeah. So that's, I just look up the Zoom clock. I realized we've already been chatting for for a half an hour and 20 oh. minutes on the recording. It's just flying by, but for good reason, because this is just like, this is great stuff. This is, this is, this is my meat and potatoes. I love this kind of conversation. Cool. And we, we talked a little bit already about a lot about your, your coaching and how you approach your coaching and who you coach primarily solopreneurs, small business owners. Um, do you have any particular ways in which you focus on doing your coaching? And that's just, I mean, obviously there are so many different ways, the one-to-one, the group masterminds, the yeah. keynote speeches, the presentations, the courses, the books, the yeah. all of the above. So do you have anything that you want to shine a particular light on? Yeah. Let me, let me shine a light on, um, well, first of all, I do group coaching primarily. I have masters in training and development. So it's, I really do a lot of training. I do complimentary nice. workshops. I do some workshops that are within a membership vault and mm-hmm. so that's a group kind of come and go experience and then I do um, a group called six weeks from questions to confidence in business that's a very mm-hmm. structured like go it's not a one-on-one there's mm-hmm. nothing and I I probably I will never teach a one-on-one maybe I don't know but it's more for hey I've been on the platform but I'm now I'm trying to actually get leads or business from it. Um, and then I do a starter one called profiles that produce miniature boot camp. It's like a three day intensive. 
Um, so I do mostly group things. And then once in a while, I will, I do take on a limited number of one-on-one -on -one clients. And it's usually someone that needs their, to determine their full brand position. They're usually mm -hmm. service-based professionals who one element to the strategy is LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then I do free things like my QR code is uh, a Tuesday tip, four minutes video or three, never over four minutes delivered to people's inbox. And it's pro tips, something you might know about LinkedIn, something you might not know. Um, because most people are like, oh, LinkedIn intimidates me. And I'm like, no, we'll just break building. it down. One, you know, the one bite at a time kind of concept. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. And then my website is called yourlinkedinexpert.com. So anyway. Excellent. I'll make sure the links to everything's in the show notes. And yeah, LinkedIn is just a big cuddly teddy bear at this point. There's just so much, there's so much good to be had. It's probably the least toxic platform that you it might is. be able to find on social media at this point. And yeah, it's, I've really been, I have to say I'm impressed with, my ability to build meaningful relationships through it as a social media platform, as a, like, I mean, I mean social Ooh, media is I obviously designed for that. that but I love to I, hear I, that. I find it so powerful, like meaningful connections that are valuable professionally, but also just enrich me personally, which I did not expect yeah. from LinkedIn five years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the pandemic made us all a little bit more human and real when we saw the CEO's daughter walking through in a two-piece bikini, we're all like that, or, you know, the <laughs> cat walking across the desk or whatever, we all got a little more authentic and LinkedIn definitely um, needed to, and it, mm -hmm. it got less uh, stiff upper lip, button up shirt vibe, and uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic about that, it needed that. Yeah. So. Yeah, me too. It's so powerful. I just, I selfishly want to just keep chatting with you because, well, no, I've, I've come to enjoy your company quite a bit already. And I could talk to you about this, about anything, but I also find that the diving deep into LinkedIn so fascinating because of how powerful of a tool it is, um, it is. for, it for is. all for, for, for all sorts of professional development, but I should let you go. It's been a little bit, <laughs> been a little bit long in the tooth on our recording, but before I go, um, is there anything you want to share? Is there any, is there any best way for people to get in touch with you and i imagine you're going to say reach out on linkedin <laughs> i that's what i'm going to say that's what i'm going to say i think um if if you haven't taken a serious look at it consider mm -hmm. it um the, the average web user of linkedin is double the buying power of the typical web user um mm -hmm. you know it's and and when people go on it they're thinking about business decisions 54 percent of people turn to linkedin as their first source when they're making a business purchase decision mm -hmm. yeah. the numbers back it up the numbers back it up and, and yeah. when you think about it like you said it's simple it makes sense it's you yeah. know it's linkedin is for and then don't people. let it intimidate you it's not it's you know you can conquer it yeah it's it's not that hard just just get started and right. you know maybe get a coach maybe get a consultant like yourself iris to to kind of maybe help help possibly. guide you into that jungle possibly if, possibly if you're a good fit oh i'm gonna have to have you back on again in like a yeah, few months I, I, I try to wait like at least a few months after i record with somebody even if i'm like really excited about them just to like let the episode breathe but i'm gonna have to have you back on this summer just to chat more about new developments in linkedin and in your business and just yeah talk about this. it's been a delight I do a complimentary workshop usually twice a year. Like this is the latest about LinkedIn. So, so yeah. Um, and it's always changing. Yeah. I'm a lifelong learner. So I apparently I picked the right platform. It changes more than any other. <laughs> you picked the right platform and this is definitely the right audience. Cause yeah, we're all pretty much lifelong learners here. Otherwise we wouldn't be here. So exactly. Thank you for being here. I'm just like selfishly. Right. I'm just like, Oh, this is such a great, I got to, I got to meet such a, a cool, awesome person today. And also, you know, thank you for being on the show and like just being so yeah. great. And, and I'm thankful you. for the introduction from Jana. This has been a delightful mm. time. Yeah. Jana Landry. Oh, Oh, we can have a podcast just about her. We'll save that for another time. <laughs> we will. We will. We will. She's awesome sauce. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. It's been a, a true delight on my side, sir. Excellent. And thank you to the audience for listening. I mean, I, I assume you got tremendous value out of this conversation. Do yourself a favor, click the links in the show notes, find out more about Iris, connect with her, talk to her. She's the real deal. And she's just fun to talk to. So at the very least, if you want to have a good conversation, start one with Iris, and we will have another conversation with you here very soon. Okay. Thank you.